Unlike many other approaches, quality specifications derived from biological variation have scientific references that they were computed from. Here are the six scientific articles that were used to derive the biological variation components for platelets. Once the quality specifications have been determined, the next step is to evaluate laboratory performance. The bias and imprecision for each test must be determined. Bias or inaccuracy can be thought of as the calibration difference between where a test is calibrated and where it should be calibrated. Imprecision is expressed as a coefficient of variation or the analytical CV. In the technical literature, the analytical CV is frequently represented as S measure. In most QC rules, there's a trade-off between error detection power and false rejection rate. The error detection power is the probability of a QC rule of detecting an error. The false rejection rate is the probability that the rule will indicate a problem when none exists. The essence of good quality control design is to select QC rules that have sufficient error detection power to detect critical errors, but the lowest possible false rejection rate. To determine which QC rules need to be considered, we need to compute how large an error we need to be able to detect. Unless laboratory bias and imprecision are both zero, highly unlikely, the normally operating test system will have some baseline amount of error. This is called the current total error. We need to detect an error that in addition to our current total error will violate the quality specification. This error is called the critical error, or S-critical. If our QC rule detects when S-critical occurs, then we'll know when our test system is no longer operating within the quality specification. The S-critical value is simple to compute, given a bias, S-measure, and a quality specification. The Z-factor is a probability adjustment factor, usually set to 1.65 for 90% probability. Once we know what S-critical must be detected, we look for QC rules that have a high degree of probability of detecting it and a low false rejection rate. The error detection characteristics of a QC rule can be plotted in what's called a power curve. The vertical axis is the probability of error detection. The horizontal axis is the size of the error. In general, as the size of the error grows, the probability of it being detected also grows. In this plot, we're examining the power curve of the 1-3-S rule when evaluated multiple times. The bottom curve is for a single evaluation. The top curve is for 20 evaluations. Notice that if the S critical is above 4, the 1-3-S rule would likely be suitable. Each QC rule also has a false rejection rate, or probability of false rejection. This plot shows the false rejection characteristics of a number of different QC rules. The vertical axis is the probability of false rejection. The horizontal axis is the number of times the rule is evaluated. Note that the 1-2-S rule is above the other rules, and the 1-3-S rule is near the bottom. A single 1-2-S rule evaluation has a false rejection probability of about 4.9%, or approximately 1 in 20. A single 1-3-S rule evaluation has a false rejection probability of about 1%, or 1 in 100. For all of your laboratory QC needs, go to www.qcnet.com.